Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, and thank you for joining us once again, the Modern Source of Gaming. I'm Kaiju K, and once again, by myself, moving on to another part of my Fakemon Top 10 list. Now, last time we dealt with some pretty creepy bugs, so this time I think we'll go even creepier to the Dark-type Pokemon. You know, Dark-types are generally put down as being the evil tricksters, they're always nasty, they're always mean, but you know what, that, that's judging a book by its cover, they're not always like that. Some of my favorite dark types. Oh, sorry, my jaw. Mm. One of my favorite dark types are actually pretty cool Pokemon. They're just like pranksters. They look like the trick people. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm not trying to defend them. They're pretty powerful up until they go up against a fighting type or a bug type. <laughs> and in which case, they I don't understand why dark types would be affected by bug types. I think. I mean, they're immune to psychic types, I guess, so, I mean, they had to throw something in there. But, uh, without further ado, let's get this one cracked out immediately so we can start this on. So, starting off at number 10, the only Pokemon so far that I couldn't find a good picture for, its name is Swamp Heap. Now, Swamp Heap comes from Pokemon Solar Light and Lunar Dark. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get a good picture of him. I, I, I remember seeing him, but I don't remember actually uh, what, he was all, what he was all about. But I do remember he was a pretty pretty strong guy. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's a dark grass type. He has the abilities Water Absorb, Sticky Hold, or Arena Trap. As Pokedex entry states that Swamp Heap is one of the most feared creatures in the swamp. It's an expert at hiding, disguising itself as a water weed to surprise. So, it's, it's an ambush predator. Okay, that's pretty dark. But he's found in the Goo, Goo Pool Swamp. Now, statistically... This guy is packing a heck of a lot of HP and really good stats all around except for speed. He isn't going to outrun anybody, but he's going to do plenty of damage. <clears throat> Weakness-wise, stay away from bug types, but he's got a massive group of weaknesses too, including flying types, poison, and fire, which are all very common. Fairy and fighting, which are now common thanks to the fairy types being out, and ice, which is the rarest of them all. And that was my, my dog suddenly going chasing after a little fly. Don't mind him. Uh, Move-wise, he, he gets all the moves you'd expect a, uh, a, a damage sponge to have, including the Stockpile series, which I think is one of the best. He also has access to uh, moves like he gets Solar Beam, uh, he can get Quash, uh, he can get Dark Matter, which is a really cool move. Um, of course, he has access to a lot of cool things. Ancient Power being one of them, Ancient Power is an awesome move. Of course, Knock Off. So going back to the top... Uh, so yeah, Swamp Heap. Um, I'd give him Water Absorb, just to give him a little bit of protection so you can switch into a water attack. Uh, knock Off, which is a great Dark-type move to get rid of your opponent's items. Energy Ball for some stab damage as well. Muddy Water, because well, Muddy Water is just an underused uh, attack. Lowers accuracy, Water-type move, really cool. I'd also give him Stockpile, just to increase his already considerable bulk. And I'd have him hold Leftovers. Um... Overall, he's really strong stat-wise, so you don't have to wor really worry about much unless you're going up against somebody who knows you're going to bring him out, or you're going up against a bug type, which will just wreck him, unfortunately. Um, next up, this is Count Chula. Count Chula, yes. Uh, vampire Pokemon. I don't really have much more to say about that. His abilities are Bloodthirst and Intimidate. Now, Bloodthirst is a special ability used by several Pokemon in Pokemon uh, Solar Light and Lunar Dark. But what it does is basically the user's biting attacks will heal one-eighth of its total HP. This healing is negated by Healing Block, and the user takes damage if it attacks somebody with Liquid Ooze. This does not count as an absorbing effect, so unfortunately Big Root will not boost it. Now that's the big problem with it, because it's not considered an absorbing effect, even though Liquid Ooze still takes effect. And the moves that are affected by it are Bug, or Bite, Bug Bite, Crunch, Fire Fang, Ice Fang, Poison Fang, and Thunder Fang. So you use any of those moves and you'll be healed by them. So that's always a nifty start. His Pokedex entry reads, Countula are very powerful Pokemon. They can strike opponents over and over again without being seen by using their knowledge of how to use the shadows to their own advantage. And he can only be upgraded by bringing out, uh, by evolving Dracublat. Now statistically, this guy is packing a lot of health, a lot of attack, and decent speed. His defenses aren't too good, but he doesn't need them it went because most of the attacks will just heal him. Um, also, statistically, he's got some pretty good defenses. Um, he's, he's weak to rock, electric, ice, and fairy. Fairy being very common. 
Electric and Rock are okay, and Ice... I don't really... I mean, I see Pokemon using Ice Attacks, but nothing nothing really big. Um, besides access to obvious moves like Leech Life, he gains access to Poison Fang, which is great. He can get Draining Kiss. Uh, he can get Crunch. Uh, he can get Hone Claws. If you remember my last video, I told, tell people Hone Claws is a really underutilized move. He also gains access to Swords Dance and Lightning Strike, which we'll get to in the Electric Types video because I'm not using it in this one. Through Move Tutor, he also learns some really powerful ones, including Bounce, another underappreciated attack that I think really goes hand-in-hand -hand with most types. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't learn Roost. Now, of course, this is Evolution Line. This is from Vambat to Dracubat to Countula. And is, of course, according to the Origins, which I missed a lot last time. I'm sorry about that. Um, his name is a combination of Count and Dracula, a.k.a. Countula. All the way back to the top, real quick. Well, move-wise, I would, of course, bring him with Bloodthirst. I would give him Crunch and Bounce for Stab, and, of course, Crunch heals. I like Bounce because it has a chance to paralyze. And, of course, avoid damage. I also like to give him uh, Poison Fang. Poison Fang has a chance to poison. Uh, what is it? It's a toxic poison. And, of course, it will also heal. Uh, on top of that, I also would like to teach him Sword Dance to give him a boost to his attack. And I would give him Leftovers because while he's up in the air... He'd be healing a bit from the balance effect. Um, besides having awesome stats, he's also a pretty cool-looking Pokemon. He looks like he's wearing a cape, but it's actually his wings. Um, and, he, and he can cover a lot of his weaknesses with the abilities he can learn. Uh, so there's that. Uh, next is Sumbarado. Now, Sumbarado is a dark ghost type that is uh, found in only, I believe, yeah, Pokemon Sage. Now, the thing is that you can't play as him unless, of course, you use the Challenger. And... Uh, He's a dark ghost type with the abilities Quick Draw and Sniper. Now, we all know what Sniper is, but what Quick Draw does is evil. So the reason you can never play as this guy is that Quick Draw makes all pri all the priority of all moves of all Pokemon become zero. Which means if you're the faster Pokemon, you always go first. Unfortunately, Detect, Endure, Protect, Quick Guard, and Wide Guard are unaffected. This means that Sombretto will mostly be the one hitting first. Um... <clears throat> Now, statistically, he's all built around decent stats. His health defenses suck, but his attack, special attack, and speed are really good. Um, he'll outspeed most Pokemon, and thus, Quick Draw gives him a huge advantage. Uh, Stat-wise, now, of course, this is from an older game, so it doesn't have it, but he would be, uh, he'd be—he'd be weak to fairy types. So, not too much there, but with how low his health is, he can get hit pretty hard. Um doesn't gain too many moves as you can see this is his full list but he does gain access to dark pulse and shadow ball uh, he can learn hex bullet seed of course he learns the standards he can learn toxic to make hex really useful uh, shadow claw and payback snarl which is always a good move that's another underutilized move and i think bullet seed just makes it sound cool because he does have a bunch of bullet firing abilities um Via the move tutors, he has he can gain access to moves like Gunk Shot, which is a really powerful poison type, uh, Pain Split for a bit of HP recovery, uh, Swift so it never misses, and by breeding he can learn, well, he can learn Ominous Wind basically, because he already learns Hex, and I don't like Fake Out. Lots of people do, but I just don't like Fake Out. Um, that's just me though. Um... How, how I would make Sombrero is I would give him the quick draw ability, obviously. I also give him access to a new dark type move that's only found in this particular game type, once again being Sage. I had to remind myself they're called Cheap Shot. And what Cheap Shot is, is Cheap Shot is basically Frost Breath for dark types. Um, it's a little weaker than Frost Breath, but what it does is it guarantees a critical hit unless the Pokemon is immune to critical hits. This means, of course, that. You can smash an opponent with critical hits over and over and over again, and due to how fast he moves, thanks to Quick Draw, he can be very quick about it. I'd also give him Shadow Punch, which is a move that always hits as well. Well, always hits. Cheap Shot doesn't. Uh, so I'd give him Shadow Punch to uh, give him the advantage of uh, a Ghost-type bonus. Uh, Will-O-Wisp, which is uh, a guaranteed chance to burn when it hits, and Hex for bonus damage against a burnt target. I've seen plenty of people bring out Guts Pokemon and then put a Flame Orb on them, so this is just bonuses. I also give him uh, the Shell Bell. Once again, underutilized move. Every time you damage an opponent, you're healed. Um, 
Overall, Sombrero is just a really cool looking Pokemon, and his, his Pokedex entry reads, The legend has it that Sombrero was born of the souls that got lost in the vast emptiness of the desert. Now it's forced to wander the Badlands endlessly. Which is just kind of creepy. And some trivia. Uh, Sombrero learns moves every five or six levels alternatively. This is a reference to the film Dirty Harry and the famous line, Did I fire f six shots or only five? Um, he's also... Uh, Sombrero is based on classic Western characters. His poncho is reminiscent of the one worn by Clint Eastwood in A Fistful of Dollars. And his name is, of course, a combination of, of Somber, Sombrero, and Desperado. Sorry about that. All right, so let's move on to our next little Pokemon up here. This is Cobarus. Now, Cobarus is also found from Pokemon Sage, as you can see. He is the eagle-eyed Pokemon. And first of all, I just gotta say, um, he is a badass-looking Pokemon. I really like him. Um, he looks really cool. The coloring on him looks cool. I'd probably have given him uh, thick fur as an ability, but that didn't exist back when the game was being made. He has hustle or guts, being a dark fire type. Gives him a lot of really cool and badass combinations. Okay, uh, statistically, as you can see, he's meant for hitting Pokemon and not getting hit back. High speed, high attack, like most dark types. But he's got slightly better health. Um, don't let that fool you, though. He can be rocked pretty hard. Uh, especially since he's weak to fighting types, ground types, rock types, and water types, which are all commonplace. Now his leveling pool, on the other hand, he has lots of cool moves that he can use access to, including Mega Horn. Uh, he could learn. You can teach him Sunny Day to boost your fire attacks. He gains Flame Charge, Caustic Breath again, which if you guys remember from the last game or the last video was uh, it has a Caustic Breath has a 20% uh, chance of lowering the target's defense and special defense regardless. So that's always a really cool move to have on a Pokemon. Um, he also learns some powerful attacks. He can learn Earthquake. He can learn Overheat. Uh, he can learn Giga Impact, uh, Snarl. He gains access to Iron Head, which is really a powerful attack, especially against Fairy types and Rock types. And he can also you can also have him be a setup. Like he can learn Stealth Rock. Zen Headbutt's pretty cool. He learns, of course, Crunch, which is a powerful Dark type physical. He can learn Flare Blitz, which is a powerful Fire type physical. And finally, not last but not least, he can learn moves like Metal Burst to help with his. Uh, relatively low health and of course dark pulse if you could get his special attack a little higher um, these are his evolutionary forms he starts off as Cobin right here and then he can either become uh, Cobarus if he's leveled up outdoors or uh, Cobalt if he's uh, leveled up indoors there's a sprite and a little bit of trivia the Cobin line was one of the last lines to get finalized designs as there were many struggling during development the method of its split evolution was considered impossible to implement for the time, but eventually a way was discovered. Many designs tried to include a burning candle to reference its traditional folklore, being a kobold, of course. Uh, when it is running for oh, when in the running for confirm uh, for confirmation, the design that was eventually won was often referred to as Mr. Puggles. His origin is, of course, based off of the kobold, a mythical sprite-like creature that takes on many forms, such as candles and animals. And his name is a combination of kobold and Cerebus. Cerebus, of course, being the guardian of the underworld in Greek mythology. His Pokedex infantry reads, Often the cause of brush fires, Cobarus will light its surroundings on fire, creating a thick cloud of smoke in order to disorient its opponents. Now, being as this guy is pretty big, I'm going to give him Shell Bell, obviously. I would teach him Guts, though, uh, just because they're going to try and toxic you or burn you anyway. Uh, but they can't burn you, of course, with your fire type. I would teach him uh, Crunch and Flame Charge for stab bonus. And Flame Charge is an underutilized move that boosts your speed anyway. Caustic Breath, of course, and Nasty Plot to boost the power of Caustic Breath. Of course, you could trade Nasty Plot out for anything. I think Earthquake would also fit in that category pretty well. Um... Next up is a really cool Pokemon just by just its appearance alone. This is Howlquin. Now, Howlquin is from uh, Pokemon Sage as well. A lot of Pokemon this time from Pokemon Sage. They made a lot of good dark types, I guess. Um, Howlquin is the Jester Pokemon. Its abilities include Prankster and Moody. Moody being an awesome ability, but very, very hard because you don't know what it's going to do next. Um... Pokedex entry says that despite lacking thumbs, its dexterity is superior to humans, while Halloquins will often taunt trainers by juggling the balls that were too weak to catch it. 
So in other words, if you throw a Pokeball at this guy and you don't catch him, he's just going to bounce on his nose and laugh at you. <laughs> um, statistically, he's a high-speed Pokemon and yeah, pretty average stats all around other categories. Um, there's a reason for that. We'll get to that later. But the biggest flaw of this guy is do not set him up against a fighting type because fighting types are 4x strong against him. He will get wrecked. And he's weak to bugs as well. Um, that being said, however, the top three moves are the reason why he has good stats. He gains access to Electro Ball, Energy Ball, and Shadow Ball, three powerful special attacks. But he also gains access to moves like Crunch, which is a powerful physical attack. And, of course, Cheap Shot, which is another powerful physical attack. Um... I'm just going to pass through the TMs a little quicker this time, because I keep saying the same things over and over again with them. Um, with Move Tutors, though, you can learn powerful other moves like Hyper Voice, which is one of the strongest normal specials you can get in the game. And you can also learn Mega Punch, you can learn Snatch, which, if timed properly, can really save your game. Uh, via Breeding, he can gain Aura Sphere, which is a powerful fighting-type attack. Um, and, of course, he can need Psy Wave and Pursuit. And in his previous form, which is Chihaha, yeah, love the name, which is this cute little thing right over here. Uh, right, right there. Boop. He can learn Fake Tears, which can really ruin some days. Uh, no other Pokemon has the same type combinations of Halloquin and its previous evolution in this game, at least. Halloquin is based off of a Dalmatian and a Harlequin, and its name is, of course, a combination of the words Howl and the words Harlequin. Now, I know I didn't boost this guy too much, but I really, really think he has an awesome design. His ears being parts of the gesture hat, his collar being another part because they usually had a three-bell system. He's got a diamond on his belly like a, like a card, and just his shape is really funny. And when I, when I actually got to play as him, he was a really good Pokemon, really strong to play as. Um, I would teach him Moody just for the randomness of you not knowing what you'll get next. You know, you might get a plus two to evasion, but minus one to slow. You never know. But uh, I would definitely shell bell him out and give him nothing but offensive moves. I would teach him Dark Pulse and Hyper Voice for uh, stab and, of course, <laughs> overall power. And then Energy Ball and Shadow Ball to cover multiple types. Uh, all in all, Heliquin is a really fun Pokemon all in all. Uh, I say all in all a lot. Um, and just look at him. I mean, he's pretty, pretty badass. Uh, statistically, you might not see it, but with the right move list, you can destroy with him. Now... Most of the end Pokemon are all going to be coming from Pokemon New Pokemon Uranium, so you can see where I'm going to go with this one. So first up, we have Tan Skewer. Now, just look at how he's designed. He's the Raccoon Wolf Pokemon. Um, he has access to the moves Guts, Moxie, and Tough Claws. Tough Claws, of course, is what I'm going to be focusing on. As Pokedex entry reads, In the wild, Tan Skewer live in packs. They cooperate with their pack mates to hunt for food and to care for Tan Coon. Nothing there says he's a mean Pokemon. Nothing says there says he's a nasty Pokemon. He's just a, a wolf protecting its pack and hunting. Good combination. He's also a dark normal, which, like I said before, Halloquin is not the only one on this list. Um, you can actually get him real early on in the game because you can get a tan skewer almost right at the beginning of the game, which will evolve into him at level uh, four, 18. Um, statistically, he's got... Pretty average stats. I mean, his special attack just sucks. He doesn't have very good defense, but everything else is okay. I mean, you're not going to run the gamut and take down like a, a Mega Garchomp with him, but you might be able to put a hurt on some people. Um, unfortunately, he is 4x weak to fighting types, 2x to bug, and 2x to fairy. Th he can't cover those. He doesn't actually have any moves that allow him to cover those attacks. Um... I mean, he can learn something to take down bug types and something to take down fairies, but he's not going to be able to beat f uh, fighting types. He also has a nuclear form. Now, this is going to be very important later on when I discuss the move choices I gave him. Um, now, by leveling up, he doesn't have a lot of really good moves leveling up. <coughs> he does gain access to Sudden Strike, which is the dark type version of Quick Attack. Um, he gets Crunch. As you can see from the list, his attacks aren't that strong. Lots of TMs. By breeding, he can learn moves like Yawn, which is another cool move. Poison Fang, which is an awesome move. But via Tutor, though, that's where the fun comes in. Uh, Nasty Plot, Fire, Ice, Thunder, and Poison Fang, all acceptable. Crunch, Knock Off, Foul Play, and Covet, all very powerful moves. Now, that being said, he, he has a nuclear form. Now, you might not be able to read this, because this is where you can find him, because it's really bright green, but I'll leave the links down in the description below. But he's gaining access to moves like Gamma Ray, Half-Life, and Nuclear Slash. Like I said, that's going to come back to haunt you. 
And of course, he has one of the coolest shinies in the game. His uh, dark red nuclear shiny is just amazing looking. Um, of course, Trivia the Tanskir is based off of the raccoon dog, a species of canine that resembles a raccoon. They are called Tanuki in Japan. And his name, of course, comes from Tanuki and Obscure, which is actually a pretty cool combination. Now, I said I would be bringing up Nuclear Slash, so let me go through my list of what I would do to make this Pokemon. Shell Bell. You saw that one coming. You know, you guys know how I love the Shell Bell. Um, I would give him Tough Claws. Tough Claws boosts damage of moves that make contact. So, even though it's called Tough Claws, it works with teeth, too. Um, I would teach him Crunch, and I would teach him Ice Fang, and I would teach him Poison Fang. No normal type attacks for Tansker for me. And a Howl to boost him. However... When I got my Tanskew originally in the game, he was a nuclear type, and I had access to a powerful move called Nuclear Slash. Now, Nuclear Slash, you get a little picture on the slide there, is a nuclear type move, and what it does is it, uh, the target has a, has a uh, great chance of landing critical hits. Now, if you didn't know, nuclear types are strong against just about everything in the game that isn't a poison type or a steel type. So I would train out uh, Poison Fang for that if I weren't using my own rules of not using the nuclear types. Um, all in all, though, I think he's just such a really cool design, and, and the, the designers who made Pokemon Uranium knew what they were doing. Um, next up is the only legendary on this list, so get ready for him. This is Actan, the rare metal Pokemon. Actan is a dark steel type with Intimidate. His Pokedex entry reads, One of the legendary Pokemon that formed the Tandor region. It taught humans about the use of radioactive met metals. Which means he's probably the reason most of this crap went down. <laughs> now, uh, as a legendary, statistically, he's very powerful. Particularly in the attack department, but he's just got amazing stats all around. He could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most legendaries. As long as those legendaries weren't fighting types, ground types, or fire types. <laughs> Also, he does have access to a nuclear form, but I don't use that one at all. Move-wise, he has a very small list of moves, one of them being, of course, his own personal move, Metal Cruncher. He also has access to Crunch. He can learn Iron Head. Now, lots of cool attacks. Um, skipping the TMs and HMs again. Uh, via Tutor, he can learn Nasty Plot, which is an amazing move. Iron Head again. Uh, he can learn Last Resort, which I've seen a lot of people use. He can also learn Outrage. He also has access to Nuclear Slash, but we're just going to skip over that for now. I mean, just looking at this guy, he's really just such a cool-looking Pokemon. And it, it, just not a Pokemon you'd want to hug, because there's just blades everywhere. Um, Dark Steel, I would give him Intimidate. I would equip him with a Citrus Berry. I'll explain why. Um, he has access to his personal move, which I said before, which is Metal Cruncher. Uh, Metal Cruncher is a signature move of the Brothers of Metal, which is Actan and his brother Lanthan. And what it does is a 120 power, 85 accuracy, and has a high chance of decreasing the target's defense. I think it's like 75%. So it's sort of like Charge Beam with lowering the opponent's defense instead. So I would give him Metal Cruncher, I would give him Crunch for Stab, I would give him Earthquake to be able to crush a lot of opponents, and then I'd give him a move that's also underused, Recycle. You can recycle a Citrus Berry over and over again and just give yourself unlimited healing as long as you can keep up the recycles. Um, I also have to say that he looks a lot like the aliens from the Ripley Scott movie, Alien. I just, I love his design. Uh, looks like he's got lightning bolt eyebrows. <laughs> um, next up is a really cool addition to the game. Its name is Barriet, the Hard Horn Pokemon. It's the black sheep of the game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um... He's a dark fighting type. He has access to the moves Guts, Moxie, and Intimidate. He also has a Mega Form, which we will be using in this particular build of mine, and because I always did uh, once I got it. And he says, a, a master of fighting dirty, Barriot likes to ensure that their foes can never oppose them again. Much like an infantry soldier, take them down once so you don't have to ever take them down again. Um, he has access to an, his Mega ability, Bloodlust, and Bloodlust... Oh, dang it. Did I already skip that one? Uh... Oh, there it is. Bloodlust. Um, Bloodlust is uh, just a really powerful ability. Bloodlust recovers some HP when attacking. It only attacks if the attack lands, and you are healed one-sixth of the battle damage. This is only used by two different groups. The Villucard family and the Bariat Megaform. So it's basically only for the, uh, the Villucard form, but we'll get to him later. Don't worry. Um, so... 
Bariat is a very powerful Pokemon, and you can get him fairly early in the game due to his evolutionary form being, uh, uh, Bashan, which you can get real early in the game. Um, statistically, as you can see, he has high health, high attack power, and just good stats all around. Uh, once he reaches his Mega Form, though, uh, his attack gets a massive boost, his defense stays the same, his special attack stays the same, his special defense gets a huge boost, and his speed gets a pretty good boost as well. Uh, Move-wise, keep him away from fairy types, fighting types, and flying types. Although, with the right moves, he can crush a lot of those fairy types, are no problem for this guy. Um, and he has a nuclear form. Uh, Move-wise, uh, his moves aren't all that impressive. He gains access to foul play, cross chop, which are pretty good. But most of the moves you'll get are either through TM and HM, or through uh, Breeding or Move Tutor. Now, via Breeding, he can get Rolling Kick, another underlies move that's really powerful. Counter and Smelling Salts. Now, Smelling Salts, uh, if I remember correctly, that's the one that works on. Yeah, that's the one that works on Pokemon that get paralyzed, um, which is pretty cool because he can learn Bounce as one of his Move Tutor moves which will allow him to paralyze opponents. He can also learn Iron Head and Crunch, which he can't naturally learn Crunch for some strange reason. He can also learn Knock Off. Now, oh wait, other way around. Okay, so that's uh, that's a standard form, including the White Sheep Shiny. This is Mega Bat... Uh, Bariat. I keep screwing up his name. Which kind of looks like an ogre with horns. Then there's, of course, his Nuclear Form and the Mega Nuclear Form. Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, trivia. It is one of three nuclear Pokemon that can Mega Evolve. The other being Gyarados and Arbok. Yes, there's a Mega Gyarados and a Mega Arbok in this game, too. Uh, Bashan is one of two Fakemon lines designed by Pequidark Velvet. The other being Glaceslug, which is another one of my favorites you'll be seeing later on. It's designed like the previous members of the line. Bashan is based on the Black Sheep, both literally and a reference to the common British idiom. Mega Bariat may be based on a demon due to the shape of its horns and the pentagram-like emblem on its chest. Well, actually, I never noticed that. Give me a second here to look. Yeah, it, 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 it's an upside-down... Yeah, it actually does look like a pentagram, huh? I never noticed that. Um, it is also a reference to the Lamb, a demon that appears in the indie roguelike game The Binding of Isaac. Awesome game. Judging by the horn shape and the fact that the Lamb is a baby sheep... Okay, all the way to the top. Boop. And, of course, how I would play him. Now, you have to give him Barriettite, I guess that's how you say it, so he can get his Mega Form. Um, he's a Dark Fighting type, and, of course, when he evolves, he stays a Dark Fighting type. Um, so, I train him with Intimidate, so I come out first and lower the opponent's attack, then I would Mega Evolve him. Once Mega Evolved, I would give him Sword Dance to boost his already considerable attack, and then I'd give him Drain Punch for extra healing, Crunch for stab bonus and even more healing, and Poison Jab to take care of them Pexy, Pe Pexky, Pexky Pixkies. Yeah, the pesky fairy Pokemon. Um, overall, he's just a really, really endearing Pokemon, a really great design, and once again, he's a Pokemon that stayed in my team through 90% of Uranium. And yes, I will be getting back to playing Uranium. I've just... There was a huge issue with uploading one of the patches, and if you can't upload the patch, you can't play the game, basically. Borealis. Now, Borealis is from Pokemon Sage, and he's just... Uh, honestly, of all the Pokemon I have ever seen, I have to say that this is probably the greatest designed Pokemon I ever saw. In-game, he's really cool-looking, too. Um, he's very colorful. Um, he has access to some of my favorite abilities, which includes Magical Bounce, or Magic Bounce, which is awesome. Um, his Pokedex entry is Boreal's psychic powers produce a vivid light shows when they interact with magnetic fields. The brilliance of the main indicates an individual's strength. Once again, not stating he's a bad guy. In fact, just from looking at him, he looks kind of peaceful and cool, although boars are pretty nasty if you piss him off. Trust me, I know about that. Um, now, statistically, you'd think he's a legendary, but he's not. In fact, his statistics aren't too good, except he's got really amazing special defense, decent special attack, and good health. Um, he's not ruining any awards, and as a Dark Psychic, he does have a 4x weakness to the bug types. So, I mean, keep him away from the bug users. 
Um, he does gain access to a lot of really cool moves, uh, including, but not limited to, Aurora Beam, an underused move, Psy Beam, Moonlight as a healing ability, um, Cosmic Power, and Stored Power, which are two of my favorite abilities in the game. Um, through the move, the magic of move tutors, though, he gains access to Gunk Shot and Icy Wind, another great move. He learns Signal Beam and Silver Wind. He gains a lot of wind moves, but doesn't gain any real flying. Um, and via breeding, he of course can learn moves like Amnesia, which can boost his already considerable special defense higher, and wish to heal himself if Moonlight isn't your style. Um, he has no evolution or unevolution. He was designed off of a boar and the Aurora Borealis, and his name is, of course, a combination of boar and Borealis. <laughs> um, I would give him a Shell Bell as well. I mean, I could give him any other moves, but because Moonlight really cuts into him and his special abilities, I would kind of cut that out. I would also give him Magic Bounce to give him quite a defensive capability against a lot of moves. Uh, those damn Spore users just has it bounce right back at them. Uh, Move-wise, I would give him uh, Dark Pulse for some coverage, Charged Beam to boost his special attack, Cosmic Power to boost his defense and special defense, and as a stab bonus to Psychic, I would give him Stored Power. Uh, an underutilized move once again, Stored Power becomes even more powerful the higher your stat changes are. With Charge Beam boosting my special attack and Cosmic Power boosting my special defense and defense, he can get really powerful really fast. And that little 489... Uh, uh, total boost there really goes up really quick. It's really hard to put him down if you give him a round or two to set up. Now, time to bring out my number one. Now, my number one pick is by far one of my favorite dark types. He may not be the coolest looking, but he's by far one of my favorites, and that is Villucard. Now, Villucard is the villainous Pokemon. He is an evil Pokemon. Even his pl Pokedex entry reads it. It constantly plots dastardly schemes to spread chaos and fear. However, its plans are always foiled by Hiraloon, which is another Pokemon from Pokemon Uranium. Um, with the access to Poison Touch, he also has access to Bloodlust, which, as you know, will make every attack he uses boost his health. Now, the best thing about Bloodlust is it works on abilities that already boost your health. So moves like Leech Life will actually do two types of healing, which makes Villicard really hard to put down with the right moves. I should know. I run him in every Uranium team I can. Now, statistically, he doesn't have the best stats. He has good attack, special attack, great speed, but pretty low in all the other stats. But he really makes up for that with keeping himself alive. He's weak to ground types, so keep that out of the category. Try to avoid those. Now, of course, he gets most of his moves before he evolves, but he does gain access to Leech Life and Drain Life, which I will show you right now. Uh, Drain Life is the... Uh, signature move of the Minyan line, Minyan being its, evol its unevolved form. And what it does is the user regains half the damage it dealt to the target. So this is basically a slightly stronger Giga Drain, I think, unless Giga Drain is 75 as well. Um, but anyways, it just makes Villicard that much harder to kill. And he also gains access to moves like Poison Fang, he can get Zeno Shock, Shock as well, Nasty Plot to boost special attack if you want to. Um, he can gain Drain Punch, which is pretty cool, even though his, you know, you probably don't want to use it. Um, he also gains access to buy Move Tutor to most of the Fangs, Fire Fang, Ice Fang, Thunder Fang. Uh, he also gains the Punches. And via Breeding, he can gain access to Giga Drain, uh, Night Slash, Sucker Punch, Poison Jab. Um, now, Minion, his unevolved form, is so adorable, I, had, I didn't want to evolve him. But I had to because Villicard is just so much stronger. And of course, Minion is, of course, n the name of Minion. His sprites are also really cool looking with that sinister... You might be able to see the sinister smile. And, if, and uh, during the Halloween event, if you caught one, he got this really cool appearance, which is really awesome. Uh, uh, Word-wise, of course, Villicard seems to be inspired primarily by vampire bats as well as mythological vampires. It, can, it also has some cat-like features, such as its tail. Villicard's inability to best its sworn enemy is probably inspired by various children's cartoon villains. I think it's actually aimed towards Dracula from uh, Castlevania. And uh, Hero Loon is actually uh, Simon Belmont. Uh, given the feline features of Villicard compared to the canine features of Hero Loon, their rivalry is obviously based on stereotypes of cats and dogs not getting along. 
And of course, Vilu card is a composite of Vile and Villain and Alu card. Dracula spelled backwards. Now with this guy. Uh, I like to play a straight battle. I like to keep away from poison types if possible. Uh, I like to give him a big root to give him even more healing capability with his bloodlust. Uh, I like to teach him leech life, especially now with the boost that it has. Drain life, for obvious reasons. Stab. And, of course, the healing factor. Poison fang, for obviously stacks up with uh, the healing factor. And it's, of course, stab. And I like to give it bulk up. Bulk up keeps it around a little longer and it boosts your attack power. And, uh... No, well, that's it for my dark type list. Whew, I made it a lot shorter this time. I like, cut off about six minutes or so. So, uh, I hope you folks are enjoying this. This is two down, several to go. Um, next time we'll bring up the shocking electric types to really put the shame to all the electric types that are in the Pokemon series as is. But until next time, folks, I'm Kaiju K, and for the rest of the Monsters of Gaming, we'll see you all next time. Peace out, everybody.